in the realm of wisdom into other organizations and structures in our society because we've figured it out in here. We can export something that they don't have. They need zero help to be more divided. In fact, some organizations are better at being unified than the church has been historically. Some organizations are much better at embracing diversity than the church has been historically. It's time for that to change. How about this? One of the things that we're wrestling with in our culture is female equality. How, how, do, how do you have... You know, so it comes up all the time. There's not enough women in parliament. There's not enough women in senior positions as bosses and so on and so on. But how do you do that? Because the way that, that, that women are made is they're made to have babies. Okay? And if you want to have a powerful leadership position and have a baby... The way that life is structured, that can come into quite a lot of conflict. Maybe as the church sheds this kind of crazy, you know, women can't lead idea and starts to allow them to be powerful, we figure out how women can be powerful and do family and have babies and be honored as amazing leaders. Maybe we discover the wisdom the world needs for what to do. Maybe we figure out how women can lead and not have to look like men to lead. Maybe we work that out right here. So it's not in the Bible in as much as it doesn't give you, there's not a manual at the back that says how to make women amazing, but there's enough in the Bible to say women are amazing and that you're all one in Christ and you all can function powerfully and anointed in the Holy Spirit. So we have the basic, if you like, juice. Then we need to call on him who reveals these unseen and unfigured out things. And you know what? We're going to get the answer. And it will be freedom for women and freedom for men and the planet will be healthier because people have mothers and people have fathers and everybody gets to function in their calling rather than these rigid boxes that we've created to try and do life. Amen. How about that for starters? If we solve that one, that would be cool, eh? I think we have that in our, in our grasp. The church is a repository of wisdom. It's the way that God is going to display his wisdom to the nations and to the principalities and powers. He's going to say, you want to know what I'm like? Look at that bunch down there. Look at them. They are so different. Their tastes are different. Their personalities are different. Their behaviors are different. But they love one another. They celebrate one another. They promote their women. They, 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 they have ethnic diversity. They have all kinds of diversity. But you know what? They're as one. And I'm amongst them. Go f if you want to know what I'm like, go and get amongst them, and then you'll know what I'm like, because you'll see my wisdom. You'll see how I love. You'll see how I involve. You'll see how I celebrate people, because they're doing it to one another. You see how I turn no one away. You'll see it all, because it's happening here. Church is this kind of laboratory of experimental, relational bubbling out from which comes unity, love, grace, and glory. As we figure out how to like people that drive us nuts. <laughs> how to embrace cultures of other nations that we have no comprehension for. Yeah. But we can do it because we have a higher culture, which is Jesus and the kingdom of heaven. Yeah. Isn't, I mean, I've heard crazy solutions to unity like, well, let's, let's get all the church playing chess so we all have a common interest. <laughs> Honestly. But actually, we, we should all have a common interest called Jesus. Yeah? That he is our unifying point. Not that we all like fast cars or playing chess. or you know, those, those can be interest groups inside the church. But actually, we're together because we love him. Huh. Oh my goodness, that's only part of it. Um, how we do leadership? How, how, how do we do leadership is part of cultural transformation for our, our world. How do, we, how do we raise it up? How do we celebrate it? How do we follow it? Because we have, we have a broken leadership system in our world. Just, just park that one there for now. And we shouldn't, borrow, we shouldn't borrow the world's feelings about leadership and import them into the church. 
which is why we don't do democracy. Yeah. Just, just saying. Yeah. <clears throat> How about resource management? At the moment in the UK, I don't see government business running to the church for advice on how to handle lots of money. But the day will come, but that requires us to learn to handle lots of money with wisdom and not be scared of lots of money because money is power, but money isn't evil. It's the love of money that is the root of evil. That's what the Bible teaches. The church has been scared of money forever. The outcome is we don't have anything much to say to the world that needs a lot of help on how to manage resources. Just thought I'd say that. So it's quite important. That actually we become really good at this thing called resources. We get good because with the heart of God, selfishness starts to disappear. Self-interest starts to disappear. Promoting what I want starts to disappear, and we start to have a more for a better word, selfless, egalitarian approach to the management and sharing of resources around, around the planet. I believe God's put everything we need in the planet. It's just that selfishness means it all gets garnered into hot spots and rich places, and then there's poor places. Surely the church can rise up and start to do... Not, not some socialistic redistribution of wealth, but a wisdom that starts to distribute what we have. Yeah. That requires us to get really awesome at handling huge amounts of resource of every kind. Yeah. And then people start knocking on our door going, how, how do you do this? And we've seen it in Africa with the farming God's way. God gave some guys some genius plans on how to farm better. And that meant the crops were like three or four times better in these. And it just changes the economy locally. And that was a God idea. Yeah. He can do that in the UK, the stuff that we face in Scotland, the stuff that we face. Yeah. He has genius ideas that you will never think of, but he's willing to give them to you. Yeah. We are the repository of wisdom for the nations and for heavenly places. Yeah. And... Uh, Finally, with a, with a place that does, that does covenant, well, this is one of those finalies that's almost the finally. <laughs> I heard somewhere that you're allowed two, maybe three finalies <laughs> if, if you've been a leader a long time. <laughs> Four is probably illegal. I'm going for two finalies. Okay, so this is the first finally. <laughs> this is the almost finally. I'll tell you when the finally finally is. Is that Okay. Oh, thanks, thanks God. What's happening? I had an interesting chat. Uh, Ian Bradby has been visiting some of you there last night, and, and I had a really great chat with him on Friday. Yet. We were discussing the whole realm of um, same-sex marriage, uh, homosexuality, and the church's approach to that, uh, particularly just been in in the, in the Netherlands and. I'm like, I really don't want to jump on, I, I actually haven't said a lot about it on purpose. Yeah. Uh, I know it's out there, I know it's an issue, but what, what bugs me about everything that the church I've seen has done about it is it's kind of taking some sort of position. Yeah. I'm really tired of that. Yeah, yeah. You know, and, and ju- it, people feel judged, yeah, yeah. basically. And we've been famous for judgment, and I think it's got to end. It's time to stop. And and that's one of the solutions to unity is we stop judging one another. Well, you're not like me, so you're wrong. I mean, that's judgment right there. So my my position on the morality has never changed, all right? I'm I'm a straightforward Bible. This This isn't what you should be doing. But my position on how we approach it you see, the problem is the church has been so hypocritical because we say it is wrong for you to do this, it's wrong for you to do that, but inside the church we've been still doing all the stuff that generates all those issues in people's lives. So we're telling them don't do it, but we're actually not helping. We're, we're, 
We, we've, we've had just as much diverse di- just as much divorce, family breakdown, poor parenting in our own house. We've not understand the thirst in the human heart for intimacy. We have not understood intimacy. And so we've not exported intimacy. And people are hungry for intimacy, so they're going to find it. We are ashamed to talk about it. We don't do it well with our God. We haven't done it well with one another. And so I'm like, let's stop telling everybody how they should live. Let's generate an environment where we know how to do intimacy with Him, with one another, and that we build family really well, that we know how to do moms and we know how to do dads, and we start to reintroduce fathering and mothering, the spirit of fathering and mothering into our planet in a way that starts to leak out the solution to the issue rather than telling people to stop behaving how they're behaving. Most people have massive issues in their life because they either had an awful father or an awful mother or both. End of. Honestly, if you could trace most problems to people's parents, their parenting, either presence of it or lack of it. Guys, we got this. We totally got this. We know what the problem is and we got the answer. Let's export intimacy. Let's export fathering. Let's export mothering. Let's export wholesome family. And suddenly, you know what? A lot of these issues will start to disappear in people's lives. Just so so someone comes in here and they're in a same sex marriage, come in. Someone comes up here and they're, 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 they're. their sexual orientation is not heterosexual. Just come in and be in a family that does love, that does presence, that does wisdom. And you know what? Could be your life for change. But we're not going to guilt you to change. We're not going to pressure you to change. Just the atmosphere. Because the thing that you lacked and you're getting in the thing you're doing suddenly gets met in a different way. This is the, why do we come to church on Sunday? To fix this stuff. Honestly, it's not just about stuff we do. It's about learning together with this laboratory of heaven on the earth so that we gather, we host his presence. And you know what? Even while I'm speaking, somebody could just be getting a download of, oh, I've just had that amazing idea. I'm going to sort my business out. Someone can give you a prophetic word as we're over coffee that is exactly what you need to know in order to fix that issue you have in the school that you teach in. Because heaven is invading the earth. Because God's in you and you're sharing God with one another. You can just be in worship and Jesus walks in the room and suddenly all the issues and cares that were weighing you down are gone in a nanosecond and you walk out of here thinking, yeah, I can fix it. I don't know how I'm going to fix it, but I know that my anchor's behind the veil. That's a great old song, isn't it? But it's solid. I'm not moving. The storms are coming at me, but I'm still here. That's what church should be doing for you. That's what we do for one another. That's what he does for us as we gather in his presence. So we do covenant. We know what it is to stick together in the rough and in the smooth. We know what it is to not quit on our friends. We know that our identity and our sense of calling and powerfulness is not to fulfill our own lives. We're here to make other people amazing. If you think being powerful is all about you being powerful, you totally missed it. That's why we even exist. It's the most powerful being there is who is God wanting to use his power to make other people amazing. Are you you? Think about it. So if you think being powerful is about you being amazing, it's actually God's equipping you so that you can make other people amazing. Just thought I'd say that. Finally, number two, this is the final, finally, section one, subsection. It's like two 
one with a little dot on the top. And then we'll get our kids and God will come and do stuff. Um, <laughs> the church is the home, therefore, of this stuff. It's the home of wisdom. It's the home of honor. It's the home of presence. It's the home of hope for our city. The intention of God is that the church is like the silos of grain that, that Joseph created, that in a world in famine, they come because we know how to get your stuff done. We know how to feed you. And it's important that we do church, not just ministry. We have a nation filled with ministries, but actually support and resource and kingdom wisdom comes in the togetherness, not in the individual pursuit. So I'm all for ministries. I'm all for all kinds of ministries. But they need to be rooted in, in, in the tension of the variety, not in the exclusiveness of the individual thing. So it's great when all the evangelists get together. They all understand one another. They fire one another off. And they want to go change the world. And off they go. But you know, if they're on their own, they are going to make a mess. And that history shows it. It's great when all the pastoral people get together. But you know, if they're on their own, we start to not go anywhere. It gets all lovey-dovey and inward looking and we're all super sensitive about how everybody's doing. Whoa, whoa, whoa. It's great when all the prophetic people get together. But that, if you just have a movement that is just prophetic people, it's like hitting an eyeball. It's like having a relationship with an eyeball. It's all about what you're seeing and what you're feeling. And what, I mean, like, let's drive you nuts eventually. We, but God put them all all together, all together, all these crazy people, the teachers who want to know exactly what Bible verse, and is that in the Greek and the Hebrew and the cross-reference? Yes, we need that, but not just that, because the rest of us are going crazy, but we need it. I want to know the Hebrew and the Greek. I want to know it's rooted in Scripture. I want to know that we're friends and that we have, we have a, a peaceful society that called the church. I want to know that we're seeing and that we're feeling, and the angel, I want to know the angels are in the room if I can't see them. I want someone in the room who does but that's how it works we're all together and we resource one another I, I, I love this I'm not sure I can even share the story but there is a story about a church we love and know and they did a huge event and lost a load of money and so they just went around all the other departments and bailed them out basically and we're talking more than you earn in a couple of 10 years. Because they're in it together. Too many things are on a shoestring, are just on fresh air, and just, it needs to be a coming together, a finding one another, and that ministry and comes out of this thing called church, which is wonderfully varied and wonderfully together in its variety. And we are the source of hope, wisdom, presence of God, honor, covenant to the nations. Yes. 